Hey, this is Amanda from The Fundamental Home and it is, I don't even know what day it is, it's Tuesday. It's two days after Christmas and I am here in my kitchen. Yesterday we cleaned up the tree. You know what, let me show you. Let me show you what the living room looks like. And here it is all cleaned up. No tree, just a couple of chairs or a love seat. All nice and spacious without the tree. It's so lovely. It's so bright and cheery. It's a little dark over in the dining room corner, but that's because it's way over there. Let me take you in the family room. I'll show you what that looks like. And here's the family room. You can see the piano is all empty. This is my couch and love seat. TV is right there. Just completely clear and open. I love the spacious feeling without the tree. I mean, the tree is pretty while it's here, but we've had it up since October 31st, so it's it was time to clear it out and feel spacious again. So back to the kitchen. So I'm in here and we are doing a little work today. I have some supplies out because I got a lot of ham. So remember we bought some ham and I got sick on Christmas day. If you're following me on Facebook, you know that I had a stomach bug on Christmas day. So even though I was really super excited about Brianna making French toast and fried ham, which she did make for everyone else, I didn't get to have any. So uh, we do have some extra ham left over and I was gonna make some soup today to try to make use of it. And while I was on the Frugal Family Food Facebook group, which if you're not a member, links are in the description box below, uh, somebody shared a ham and bean soup recipe. Now I was going to make uh, one of my favorite Pinterest recipes, uh, Chef John's potato soup. And I'm also linked to Pinterest down in the description box. So anyway, I plan to make Chef John's ham and potato soup on the stove. And then somebody on the Frugal Family Food Facebook group shared a ham and bean soup in the crock pot. And I thought, you know what? That would be really great for me to go ahead and make. My husband loves ham and bean soup. I can make that over here, not affect anything. And then we'll have two great soups this week for everyone. Cause of course, you know, the guys are home. Well, Ricky's off school right now. Brian's at work but good things for lunches and just to have around. So anyway, it seemed like a pretty simple recipe. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is. It's from Sweet and Simple and a Dash of Crazy, that blog spot. Okay, so that's what it is. Like I said, someone shared this. I haven't really looked at this blog. I don't really know anything about it except that this recipe is here. And look, you can see it's real, real simple. You got a pound of dried white northern beans, rinsed and sorted a pound of ham, uh, three cans of chicken stock, one medium white onion, pepper, parsley, oregano, put everything in the crock pot, cook on low for eight hours. So, I mean, you can't get any more simple than that. So, let's get to work. Okay, so I have the beans in the crock pot. You can see them right there. And I'm going to put the chicken stock in. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and use the tubs of chicken stock. Remember I got these tubs right here for 33 cents. Price tag still on up. So um, the recipe calls for three cans of 14.5 ounces. So I did the math and that's 43.5 ounces in total, which means that uh, when you divide it by eight, because there's eight ounces in a cup, and uh, you're gonna need about five and a half cups of the stock. Well, each of these tubs of stock equals three and a half cups of liquid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use two. It's gonna be a little extra liquid, but I don't think that's gonna hurt the ham and bean soup. Uh, it'll just, just be a little more liquidy maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it'll soak it up or not. I'm trying to get better light here. So anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use two tubs of stock and add the water to go with it. So it'll be seven cups that I'm adding. It's really two cups too much, but well, one and a half cups too much, but we'll, I think it'll be good. And then I'll cut up the onion and cut up the ham. Add the seasoning, we'll be ready to go with this one. So simple. Okay, now don't be offended that I don't use the cutting board yet. I have the cutting board. I just have not oiled it properly yet. So I've got to get that done. I just haven't done it yet. I'm going to get it done. It's on my list. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my regular plate and uh, soon I will show you me using the real cutting board. But we're gonna go ahead and cut up the uh, onion and the ham.
hands are a little teary from cutting the onion. Okay, so uh, this recipe does not call for salt, and I'm imagining that's just because you have the chicken stock and the ham, so you probably don't need any extra salt. Um, but I don't know, I haven't made it yet, so we're gonna see how it goes. And then, uh, but it does call for pepper, oregano, and parsley. So I'm gonna go add, ahead and add those spices in. Let me go ahead and turn this crock pot on low right now, because it's already plugged in. Already on low, and it is gonna be ready to go. You can see, without me adding the spices, that I mean, there is a good amount of space in here. When I look at it, I feel like I could probably double this recipe, but since I haven't made it before, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it go as it is and um, see how big how big all those uh, beans get in this crock pot, and then I'll know next time if I can double it. So let me get the um, parsley and pepper and oregano, and then this will be done and we'll get started on the oven. So I think that is going to be really, really good. I didn't have uh, separate oregano and parsley. I need to get some. Uh, but what I did have was some Italian seasoning. So I was like, that's good enough. We'll throw that in there. So Italian seasonings in the crock pot and that is ready to go. And I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Look what Brianna was doing while we were making soup. She made cookies. Yum, yum, yum. Can't wait to have some. So moving on, now we're going to Chef John's potato soup, or yeah, ham and potato soup. And for this one, we're going to need, I'm going to cut up that other onion. That onion was actually very large. You're only supposed to use, in the other recipe, you're supposed to use one onion, but this one's so large, I use half of that onion. I'm going to use the other half over in Chef John's. And um, you're supposed to use a rib of celery and one carrot diced. And I'm gonna just do the shaved carrot like I normally do. You've seen it before in my other recipes. And you throw the ham and some garlic into uh, butter that's melted down. So um, let me cut all my vegetables up and then we'll get into all the details. Okay, so the butter is melting and as soon as it melts, we're gonna to toss the uh, onion that I cut in. And I have a bag of frozen celery that I keep on hand. And I'm going to shred up the carrot like I normally do with the potato peeler, or the vegetable peeler, I should say. And then I'll slice up the garlic real fast, and we'll let that cook down till it's nice and, um, what's the word? Till it's like nice and translucent. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We gotta put the ham in there too. Ham too. Ham with the vegetables. Ham, celery, onions, carrots, and garlic. And then after that, we're gonna add a little cornstarch and thicken it up and then add some broth and then we'll really start getting into making this soup. Butter's cooking down. Okay, so all the vegetables are in here with the ham. I have the onion and the celery and the carrots and the garlic and the ham and the butter. And I'm gonna let it cook just a few minutes more and um, then I'm gonna add some cornstarch. The recipe actually calls for flour, but of course, you know, Ricky is gluten-free, so we use cornstarch to thicken up. And uh, I'm just gonna get it in here until I realize the, that it looks the right consistency. I've made this soup several times, so I kinda know what I'm looking for in terms of consistency, but make sure you check the recipe. I'll link in the description box the actual recipe if you're gonna use the flour. Um, and you can see what it's going to look like with the cornstarch when I add it. That onion is looking really translucent. The celery is looking really good. Could use a little, little bit more cooking. We'll just get a couple more minutes and um, then we'll be ready to add the cornstarch. All right, it's starting to brown a little bit, so I definitely think we got to go ahead and add some cornstarch. It's only a little bit over medium. Had it on uh, five and a half. Now it's just a little over five. So I'm gonna start adding some cornstarch here. I probably tossed about, I don't know, a tablespoon, maybe two in here. I definitely think I'm gonna need more than if this is gonna thicken up the way that I wanted it to. Maybe double that amount. Again, this is cornstarch, not flour. And you normally use more cornstarch, in, in my experience, you need a little more cornstarch than you use flour. Flour thickens up a little more readily. Okay. 
I really want it to have this nice coat on the bottom of the pan and all of the vegetables to be nicely coated. I think we're there. Oops. Turn the pan around. It's hard to hold the camera and stir. Okay, so we're in a good place. I'm gonna go ahead and add the stock. This recipe calls for um, four cups of stock. I'm gonna go ahead, I added a little extra vegetables because I knew I was gonna have to use two of those things to stock, which is seven cups. So, um, so this isn't quite a double recipe, but it's about a double recipe. Let's add the stock. Okay, and here is the recipe, or excuse me, here is the soup with the liquid added. Um, we're gonna bring this up to a boil and then turn it down to medium-ish and let it simmer for about 15 minutes before we add the potatoes. So in the meantime, I'll go ahead and cut up some potatoes. Now, the recipe itself called for, I don't know if I mentioned this, two cups of water. And remember, I, I put seven cups of liquid in here instead of four cups. So like I said, I added a little more vegetable and a little more liquid to make it just a little more than a single batch, not quite a double batch, just to make up for that extra liquid. So um, I think we're in a good place with this. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up to a boil, let it simmer for 15 minutes, cut my potatoes, and we'll be back, add the potatoes, and get this soup finished up. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna add these potatoes in here, so. The recipe called for one and a half pounds, uh, but like I said, I, I made a little extra. <clears throat> so I probably put in probably two to three pounds. I actually might need a little, add a little extra water because those potatoes might need a little more. It's gotten kind of thick with the cornstarch. <clears throat> the thing about cooking is, is if you do it a lot, you kind of get a feel for things. When you're first getting started, it's good to follow recipes to learn how to do things, but once you get going and, and really learn to, how food works, you get a feel for it. I'm gonna add a little more water. And we're gonna raise this up to a simmer again. Yeah, that's good right there. We're gonna raise this up to a simmer again and then cook it 15 minutes on high. Well, let's raise it up to a simmer and then we'll put the lid on. And this time we're gonna simmer it with the lid on. In the meantime, some of the cookies have been eaten. Okay, you can tell it's gotten brighter outside. It's getting brighter in the house, but anyway. So um, the soup has come to a boil and I got the lid on and we're gonna let that simmer for 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm cleaning up my kitchen. This side looks fine, but the dishes that I use to make all of this, not fine. And of course, the cookies haven't all been eaten. We actually moved those to a plate over here. So anyway, so these dishes I've got to do, and these dishes, which were already done, have to be put away. So I'm gonna take care of that right now. That's how we keep our kitchen clean. And on a side note, while I was making this, Ricky came into the kitchen and asked me what in the world I was making that smelled so good, and I told him ham potato soup, and he said he is excited about it, and he is going to be happy to do the soup tasting for us. So, we'll see Ricky in a minute. Okay, so the potatoes are done. They're nice and soft, and when I push it up against the edge of the pan, they break apart really easily. So this is ready to go. Now there's only two steps left. Um, if you had a potato masher, you could just mash it. I don't. So I'm gonna take some of this, not a liquid, just some of the hard stuff, and put it in my food processor. Not all of it, like I said, just just a, some of it, just to give it kind of a thickness and just kind of a pleasant texture. And um, I also, one of the other steps is to add heavy cream. Now, I'm gonna tell you just honestly that adding heavy cream really adds something to this. If you have it, don't skip it. Put, put the heavy cream in the dish and you'll be glad that you did. I mean, really, honestly, I. I have no words to tell you about the heavy cream. It really adds something. Something special. So I don't have any. I think I might add a little bit of milk and a little bit of sour cream. 
the sour cream, well, maybe yogurt, I don't know. Because I have some plain yogurt that's not sweetened. So first I'm gonna go ahead and process this. Look how bright it is in my kitchen right now. Okay, let me take this over here to my food processor and process. It's nice and thick. Okay, so I added it back in the soup. It's a little thicker. Looks really good. I'm just gonna add a little bit of, um, maybe a little yogurt and some milk. We'll be all finished. Okay, I added about two tablespoons of the yogurt and just a little bit of milk. And I think it's gonna be just fine. You can see the yogurt is still thick. And there, I'm stirring it up. And all that is is just adds a little more creaminess. And it's not like a flavored yogurt, it's plain whole milk that's been thickened into a yogurt. So I should definitely just add a little something to it, but I'm telling you, heavy cream, if you have it, add the heavy cream. So here's Ricky getting ready to try his delicious soup. Are you excited? Very. All right, Dad's here and he tried it. He doesn't want to be on film because he's in his work clothes. All right, Ricky's going to eat his soup. I know he's excited. I'm filming, people. That's really good. That's really good. You've had it before, right? Yeah, but this is better than last time you made it. I put I yogurt like it in lot. it. You like, do you think the yogurt, yogurt in it? Yeah, can you believe it? No, I don't. Can you weird. tell? That's it doesn't weird. taste yogurty, does it? It's got a little sweet thing, but I would not have thought yogurt. <clears throat> but it's like plain yogurt. There's no like sweetness to it. Oh. And what's the sweetness? Probably the ham. Alright, well, it's really good though. So Ricky likes it. Yay! Okay, so that's it with this soup. I will check back in with you later when the ham and bean soup is done and we'll give that a try. Okay, so it's obviously much later in the evening and I think but the soup is done. So I was gonna show it to you and show you what it looks like. I definitely think I could have doubled it. Ooh, there it is, all steamy and good. Uh, I definitely think I could have doubled it. It wouldn't. Have, I was worried that it would puff up and, and really fill up the crock pot. I definitely, like I said, I definitely think I could have doubled this and had a big old crock pot full. So I'll know that for next time. Just just double the recipe. And in a crock pot this big, anyway, it's a pretty sizable one. I'm not sure how many how many quarts it is, but it's a pretty big one. Anyway, it looks really good, nice and creamy. If I wanted it creamier, I could go ahead and puree some of it, but I'm not going to. I'm actually gonna save this for lunch tomorrow. I think the fellows in the house will like it. For lunch tomorrow with some cornbread. So anyway, that is it. Two ham soups in one day. Two, two ham soups in one day. And uh, everybody loved the first ham soup and I know they're gonna really love this one because people in my house love ham and beans. So yay, ham and beans. Click like for ham and beans. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get back to getting all the stuff together for dinner. Hope you guys liked the video. And it's morning, yay. I wanted to give you one last note on that ham and bean soup. Rick tasted some last night and he was so super excited about it. He said it was even better than the other soup. And he's coming home to have it for lunch today. Brian took some with him for lunch and I think Ricky's gonna have some. Anyway, the point is I definitely should have doubled it for sure because now that I've doled it out into different size portions, it was nowhere near enough. I needed to double it. But second thing, Rick said he is literally going to run home on his lunch because he's so super excited to have the ham and bean soup and the cornbread. So that's a really good one. So recipes linked in the description box. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm really glad you came to visit us here at the Fundamental Home. Make sure if you enjoyed this video that you click the like button and also click subscribe right below me for more videos coming into your inbox all the time. 
And also, if you enjoy social media, we've got links up at the top here for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all the other fun things. And check out thefundamentalhome.com for more information about what we're doing all the time and how we do it, because there's way more details there. And uh, here, over to the right, we have some videos that I recommend. So thanks again for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye.